welcome to the uh, webinar building a future in iam and a deep dive into still point identity iq careers so in this session i would be uh, talking more about uh, you know the market of iam so what is the current iam market and how to you know uh, strategize yourself as a iam engineer and a road path uh, to become an uh, sale point engineer yeah and as as well as i would be giving you lo lot of information regarding the current trends in the market and the high demand of resources and lot of information around the uh, no, current growth perspective of the market as well so in the iam space yeah well so meet your speaker myself uh, hyder ali sheikh i comes with overall 10 years of cyber security background and i am a cyber security sale point developer in one of the biggest consulting firms i am a sale point certified identity iq engineer a sale point certified identity now professional and as well as sabi intel 100 certified itil v4 foundation certified and i also hold lot of other certifications as well and i comes with a core i am background guys i am a blogger vlogger uh, i have delivered more than 500 hours of training in sale point identity iq and i have delivered lot of trainings with infosec train as well well that's about me a very warm welcome guys once again uh, the iam career aspirants this will definitely this webinar will definitely benefit you uh, to to kick start your iam journey guys okay so believe me uh, i will i will go inside the you know insights of iam so in terms of market trends and as well as why iam is booming currently yeah so how why organizations are moving to cloud iam structures and what are the critical benefits of iam so everything we'll be discussing here well so what is iam guys okay so identity and access management okay well so let me uh, give you a best example of iam generally okay so before i go to the technically what is iam means Uh, just imagine where a visitor comes into your home and walks directly into a master bedroom, and from the master bedroom, no, he is he is going to uh, ch children's bedroom, and from children's bedroom, he is going to the kitchen. No, from the kitchen, finally he goes to uh, no, quest room without any permission. Okay. So it looks strange uh, no and offensive and no vulnerable if you agree with me so this scenario is same in case of the organizations no iam guys in the cloud no without iam okay so it's the same uh, the same scenario is happening no in organization resources in the cloud without iam every organization needs to have an iam product okay most of the larger organizations are having the iam no? well without iam every user you no know, has an access to every resources and in this case you no know, misuse and theft okay so there is a lot of chance of have you no know, uh, having threats and vulnerabilities vulnerabilities inside the organizations since the organization you no know, cloud cloud breaches are happening in current trend okay so if you have an iam so the unrestricted access can be achieved the permissions can be segregated you no know, everything can be structurized to the organization's policies so as i told you guys in the previous example an unauthorized person entering into the house and you no know, roaming around the house without any permission definitely you will not agree with me you no know, with this example right so without an iam so you no know, the same thing is happening in the organization's resources you know when it comes to the cloud okay so as everyone is moving to the cloud recently right so iam is a process of managing the users to ensure that the right people has an access to the right resources 
and preventing the unauthorized accesses inside the organization resources so that is the actual definition of identity and access management so you no know, i have mentioned here a person a person is nothing but you no know, an organization's employee okay an employee will definitely have an accounts so that is in multiple application accounts inside the organization right guys okay so that is you know, we have an active directory we have you know, an hr account and an employee will have a people soft account and many more application accounts right so that is an organization's business applications accesses right so if you have an iam tool inside the organization to manage your identities that is the user identities then you no know, the joiner lever mover everything can be automated guys okay okay so when i say automated you no know, the joiner procedure like you know what are the applications that are all required for the user you no know, can be can be given on the first day okay so the birthright accesses can be granted to the user on the first day of the joining itself if you have an iam product you no know, as part of the automation of iam right so you no know, every organization needs to have this identity and access management tool in order to automate their joiner lever mover processes okay yeah well we would be providing an access to the user you no know, with all the required applications all the no business applications or the birthright accesses on the first day itself okay hence what happens is you no know, the organization's productivity will increase and the organization's growth will happen and the services to deliver the applications will will you know, the time to deliver the applications and services will get reduced inside the organization as yes, okay and there are a lot of business benefits of having this identity and access management so we can ensure the security inside the organization we can ensure the uh, security breaches you know, happening inside the organization we can reduce the risk inside the organization and potentially you know, the business growth will happen if you have an identity and access management so if you ask me a startup organization you need not to have an you know, iam tool to manage the lesser infrastructure so whenever they have a small infrastructure okay so they you no know, like you know let us assume they have 100 employees and 10 business applications then an iam product is not required for them guys okay i don't say not required it is up to them either they want to go for an iam product or they don't want to go for an iam product but when it comes to a larger organization like you know there are a lot of business organization you know business organizations like you know a financial sector organization or maybe a bank or an corporate company or an it company or you know, any healthcare organization or hospital so when i say larger organizations or bigger organizations you know, iam product is required you know as the the employees count will be more the identities count will be higher you no know, inside the organizations guys okay no in order to manage the bigger infrastructure so and also they will have more business applications so the employees would be accessing more business applications within the organization so in order to deliver the services of those applications it's always good to have an iam product you no know, to reduce the services as i said the no, the benefits of an iam can be achieved okay and it will be more valuable for an organization's growth well well so no what is the market scope of identity and access management guys okay and the deliverables of identity and access management so i have mentioned some of the you no know, high level definitions like everyone must be aware of you know when we say iam okay these are all the critical uh, deliverables of identity and access management guys okay the first one is user authentication okay so when i say authentication so no authentication is nothing but cross verifying the credentials or validating the no validating the accesses no validating the credentials so when i say 
validating the credentials you know validating the username and password of the user is called as an authentication basically that is the definition of an authentication okay so there are various means of passwords you no know, biometrics and multi factor of authentication so you no know, authentication can be happening you know, in a, in a different modes like you no know, multi factor authentication it could be an sms based verification or maybe a credentials based verification or maybe uh, a otp you no know, one time password based authentication or maybe a fingerprints you no know, or maybe a face authentication okay so all are those are all called as authentication modes okay so these modes can be you know simply called as multi factor okay so there are various factors of authentication you no know, even we have google authenticator microsoft authenticator you no know, to authenticate the user logins okay so that is called as my authentication guys okay well so one of the critical scope of iam is you know, delivering the authentications inside the organizations okay well so next we have authorization okay authorization is nothing but determining what resources users can access and what actions they can perform based on their permission rights okay what are the permission rights they have within the application so based on that the user will be accessing the rights okay so if you enter into a bank okay so let me give you a layman example you know, whenever you enter into a bank a manager will have a different level of access okay a clerk will have a different level of access right so similarly inside the organization there are different type of authorizations guys okay so which will define based on your job role your authorizations are defined inside the application okay a manager can manager and a clerk will have same application but with a different level of accesses different level of authorizations right so that is called as an authorization so if you have an iam we can we can manage these kind of authorizations inside the organization yes okay everywhere you go authorizations plays a key role right so as i said in the in the beginning example of uh, the definition of iam okay, a general person a visitor a family member or a friend okay so we have different different roles right so within the you no know, generally if you speak yeah so we have a family member so he have all the rights to roam inside the home right so likewise well so that is my authorizations okay so what level of authorization similarly you no know, inside the organization there will be different different authorizations those authorizations will be automatically can be managed without you no know, with an iam tool okay well so next we have identity governance okay so when i say governance so governance as a whole you know, there are a lot of things within the governance guys okay so we have compliance we have access certifications okay that is called as audit okay and audit is also very you know, important inside the organization guys okay so every organization do follow an audit protocol okay so they do have a quarterly audit maybe an annually audit or you know, they do have you know, weekly audit monthly audit so you know, based on their own frequency you know, they would be setting an audit okay so that is part of governance like you know who has access to which resources and you know are they authorized to have that access or not you know, these things can be evaluated in the audit okay well so you no know, you can simply also call it as like you know overseeing and managing the user identities to ensure the compliance and security policies and regulations are met within the organization okay that is called as my identity governance well next we have something called as provisioning and deprovisioning okay so one of the critical deliver deliverables are like you know delivering the application services okay so providing the access to the user in a a required moment of time okay so when it is needed the access needs to be provisioned to the user when it is not required the access needs to be deprovisioned to the user so provisioning is nothing but creating a user in the target application it's called as provisioning so deprovisioning is nothing but deleting an account or removing an account 
is called as deprovisioning guys okay so no so basically we would be managing the user accounts okay so this is also one of the critical you know, deliverables of iam okay so where we can you know, manage the user accounts okay well so most efficiently you can manage the access rights okay so while you no know, when when we say deprovisioning like you know the access permission rights can also be removed well and obviously we have a joiner process right so as i was telling you in the you know, another example okay joiner so when i say joiner okay of onboarding of the user or offboarding of the user okay so joiner is nothing but my onboarding process of the organization right so so when i say provisioning the users will get access to all the birthright applications inside the organization okay that is my provisioning okay so these are all the deliverables these are all the critical deliverables of identity and access management guys okay and there are a lot more you no know? so we have uh, risk management data security and lot of things in you no know, in the iam uh, in the cyber security okay under the cyber security iam is one of the component okay one of the key component and these are all the market scope of iam okay well and mainly these all things comes under automation guys okay so we will not entertain any manual things okay so mostly we would be doing all the automations you no know, to standardize the organization policies and everything okay so that is what uh, an iam engineer's job okay well okay so let's have a look into the significance of iam market no in the industry so the iam market is uh, significant for several reasons the first reason is uh, security compliance okay what is security compliance as we all know the definition of compliance okay so compliance is not, nothing but the combination of audit reports and analytics okay it's called as my compliance okay so when i say security compliance okay so that is the you know, the regulatory compliance or the regulatory requirements with the rise of regulatory requirements like you know gdpr hipaa you know, ccpa okay so you no know, business need a robust iam solutions okay to manage or to comply the audits and regulations of an organization or to meet the data protection laws you know? so there are a lot of laws like you know we have hipaa you know, we have sox audit okay one of the popular ones uh, most of you might be knowing which is called as sox audit okay so sox is nothing but you no know, sarbanes oxley act okay well so you no know, we also have hipaa okay we also have gdpr general data protection act yeah well so to meet this regulatory compliance okay an iam is required okay as i said you no know, robust iam solutions are required to maintain you know, or to comply the audit regulations to meet the security compliances okay so that is one of the significance guys okay well next okay we have something called as cyber security threats okay well so when i say cyber security threats as a cyber you no know, th threats are increasing sophisticatedly as well as you no know, organizations requires an iam tools to safeguard you no know, their sensitive information and to prevent the unauthorized accesses okay so when i say cyber security threat okay so there is a lot of information security breaches happening inside the organizations guys okay so when i say information security breach like you know an unwanted user has an access to okay an important information inside the organization okay so 
whenever you know, an employee or someone has an access to the unauthorized ones you now obviously he will get to know about that information and he will start you know, spreading that information as well okay so you know, where the conflicting uh, you know, accesses or the conflicting of informations will increase inside the organization and or maybe i can say a duplicate or conflicting information will increase within the organizations guys okay so these are all comes under your cyber security threats okay so if you have an iam tool okay so we can safeguard the sensitive informations like you know so we can restrict the accesses to to certain level at least like you know who should have access to which resources can be structurized inside the organization you know, which will ensure the sensitive information is always protected okay so that is my cyber security threats well well so there are other points uh, we have so cloud adoption okay so there is lot of organizations uh, currently moving to the cloud as as you guys know like you know uh, the remote culture of uh, working has been you know increased and you no know, so which is uh, which is asking or maybe which you no know, which is uh, you no know, making the organizations to move to the cloud okay to ensure like you no know, the the deliverables of all the business services you know, will have you no know, on time okay so when i say cloud adoptions the shift towards the cloud services has made uh, the iam as an essential thing for an you know, an organization to manage the accesses no for the diverse environments like you know dev test prod all those environments okay so including the on premises and cloud and the hybrid infrastructures are started moving to the cloud okay so that is my cloud adoption guys so which is you no know, making companies to move to the cloud yeah so like you know everything has become remote right so after covid you know, the things have become a lot of changes have you no know, happened inside the organization you no know? so in the operating of corporate culture and you know everything has been uh, drastically changing right so which is you know which is the best thing to happen but however you know, that's always good guys okay well so this is about the uh, cloud adoption so next we have uh, the user experience uh, the modern iam solutions focus on providing the seamless uh, user experiences you know so they can access the, uh, the the application services you know properly and it can be maintained uh, robustically you know, in securing the organization which is very vital uh, for workforce productivities and all of that okay so that is the user experience uh, the employee experience okay so let us assume uh, an employee uh, wants to go on a vacation or maybe an employee wants to uh no access a resource management uh, system probably okay or maybe information security management systems now whenever they want to access such applications okay the accesses you no know, can be provided auto automatically like you know a user can uh, do a self registration okay so which will give him the instance access like you know the moment when you register so instantly it will just you no know, give you an uh, registration link or maybe a confirmation link hence if you confirm the you no know, an uh, message or a link you know, and you would be you know, granted with the right accesses on time okay so that is my user experience and hence the user will get you no know, uh, the experience of uh, you know, gaining the accesses on time and he can you know, just do whatever he needs as for his job roles okay so that is my user experience okay this is also one of the significance of uh, no i am in the industry guys okay well next the market growth and uh, no and the compound annual growth rate okay so which is called as cagr So if you see uh, from 2024 to uh, 2031 the IAM market is expected to to experience a significant growth guys okay 
so uh, it's driven by increasing security concerns and evaluating the digital landscape okay so the compound annual growth rate uh, for ia market uh, during this period is projected to be high now, often estimated in the range of uh, 10 to 15 percent you know depending on the market analysis as of now okay so this uh, is projected to you know and uh, to be attributed to many things so which we'll be looking at well so as i said you no know, so there is a high growth of IAM market guys okay so if i can uh, simply tell you okay so there's a you know, a global market open in the you know, IAM and you know there is a lot of growth a significant growth is expected in you know, in the coming years okay so in 2024 to 2031 well so which will uh, you know the as per the analysis of market okay so these, there are certain attributes which we need to consider so the things uh, which which is making an organization to you know adopt the iam things if you see increasing in adoption of uh, cloud identity solutions and yeah so this is one of the recent trends guys like you know most of the organizations are started adopting the cloud identity management solutions even salepoint has identity security cloud which is you know, very which is very currently booming you know the lot of uh, you know, organizations who wants to go to the cloud okay they are adopting the identity security cloud solutions of sale point as well well and uh, the rising of uh, focus on identity governance and administration so as we saw you know, there's a lot of things you know, an organization needs to meet okay so that is why the the rising focus on the identity governance and administration solutions have been rising like anything okay enhance the demand for iam solutions you know, from a small and medium sized enterprises you know, and the importance of uh, securing the organization in both terms of customer and uh, as well as the employee identities okay so these things are you know, attributed you know, which is a significant growth inside the market as well cool so that's what uh, you know, as i said there is a high you know, growth in the market so in this uh, duration guys okay well notable trends and certain factors influencing the ia market growth okay so there's there should be something which will influence the market right so let's see what is that trend and what are the factors that is influencing the ia market the first one uh, the zero trust security model okay so the adoption the adoption of uh, zero se trust security which requires strict verification of very you know every user and device is driving interest in advanced IAM solutions uh, that can facilitate this approach okay so the zero trust security models the adoption of uh, zero security is also being increased inside the organization this is one of the influencing factors guys okay next we have the art no artificial intelligence and machine learning okay so the integration of iam and machine learning in iam system is enhancing the threat detection capabilities and enabling more adoptive and granular access controls inside the organizations okay well the booming of ai guys okay and the, there's a lot of integrations happening you know, within the iam iams as well like you know who has uh, access to which resources and you know so there is uh, the recent thing there is something called as identity ai product so if you integrate iam ai product with sale point identity iq now what happens you know so based on your access history based on your access removal uh, what a uh, system do, does you know so based on the best practices okay based on your access history it will start recommendations uh, to the manager okay so during the access review process so based on your uh, past decisions sale point will recommend okay you can approve this particular access to your subordinate or maybe if it is you no know, an unwanted access no, he can also remove the access as well so it will start recommending it for removal or maybe approval 
okay based on your past decisions based on your activities okay well okay so that is my artificial intelligence guys okay well next we have identity as a service okay idas so so far you might have seen uh, SaaS models which is software as a service now in recent tense we have identity as a service as well so the increase in uh, trends towards the ida solutions as you know, which will offer iam capabilities through us you know, through a subscription model uh, based you know, kind of models guys like you know if you take identity now okay so sailpoint has a product which is called as identity now so it's not like a license based product so it is purely and you know, a kind of subscription model guys okay well well so next we have uh, biometric authentication so when i say uh, no, biometric authentication so as we discussed earlier you know the face recognition or face authentication or you no know, fingerprint authentication so all those are all called as the biometric you no know, authentication guys okay so you know, the technologies like uh, rsa most of the organizations are moving you know uh, to prevent the the you know, identity frauds you know, all of that well okay so next we have a remote work culture okay so one of the things uh, drastically you know so everything has become you know, wfh right so it's just work from home okay the rise of remote work uh, necessities of robust im solutions you know managing the user users accesses within the organizations and their resources well so the locations and uh, you know, like you know, various locations or devices you know, where the user is accessing you know, a user can log into sale point you know from an, a tablet or maybe an no, mobile device as well cool so that is my uh, remote work culture yeah so these are all certain uh, trends so which are all influencing the IA market guys okay so this is the growth uh, as I said there is an expected growth of 2024 to 2031 there is a high demand uh, no, for the IAM solutions yeah and these are all the trends and the, these are all the factors which are all influencing the growth of IAM market well well so let's have a look into the IAM career opportunities guys okay so I know most of you might be awaiting for this topic yeah so whatever I've told so a lot of uh, researchers you no know, lot of uh, trends a lot of libraries are telling this yeah well cool so i am career opportunities guys okay so if you see the i am career opportunities there is a high demand you know, as you see the i am market growth okay so there is a high demand for the professionals as well okay as organizations are prioritizing the security the demand of uh, for i am solutions is rising like anything roles such as i am analyst I am engineer, I am developer, architect, okay, are in a high demand across the various industries, including you know, finance, including healthcare, technology, okay, AI, okay. so a lot of organizations. Okay. Well, so you want to become an I am engineer, then you know, just try to be up to date in the market trends try to be aware of the informations as much as you can okay so just try to read a lot of blogs which will definitely help you in improving the you know, current trends current threats happening within the organizations guys okay well so in spite of that being an IM engineer having a proper knowledge how to maintain the product how to utilize the the potential of the product in terms of implementing new policies okay utilizing the im products to at its best level okay so that is where the iam engineer is required guys okay so that is why you are here right so 
yeah so you are the tomorrow's engineers of IAM okay so you're gonna manage so you know, tomorrow when you join an organization obviously the organization will hand over their IAM to you okay you guys needs to manage in and out of the product okay so if you need to maintain that then how much of knowledge you need to have so just imagine that guys okay well so diverse uh, yeah so that is the demand so that is what it is demanding for a lot of high professionals okay well so diverse uh, roles okay as we have variety of roles in iam okay it's not like you need to focus uh, to become a developer okay so you don't need to uh, no only focus to become a developer so like you know most of uh, might you might have heard that okay so if i am i know java or I know uh, I am then only I should become an IAM engineer so that is a false information guys okay it's nothing like that it's just a prerequisite if you know those things then you no know, you can become a good IAM engineer very faster yeah or faster or I would say you can become an expert you no know, you can go to the next levels easily if you are from that backgrounds okay if you are not from the IAM background and you are new to the IAM background, then you no, know, there are a lot of you no, know, there is a lot of uh, growth and there is a lot of demand. There are a lot of opportunities, you no, know, inside the organizations, guys. Okay, as I said, you no, know, IAM offers you a variety of career paths. Like you know, you can become uh, an analyst. Okay, maybe a non-technical role, or maybe. Uh, a, I am uh, a business analyst. Okay, so there is something called as business analyst. Okay, it's purely a requirement gathering thing and you no know, kind of uh, you know, dealing with the stakeholders. You know, all of those things you know, comes under the responsibilities of a business analyst. Okay. Well, okay, so you can try to focus on all the other areas of sale point guys. Okay, so based on your you know, backgrounds, you can choose your uh, you have an option to choose the variety of roles within IAM as well. So if you want to become an audit engineer or maybe an access uh, no, review specialist, okay, so then you can work on the certification modules of sale point, or maybe if you are a core expert in sale no in, in java then probably you can even become a developer as well okay so if you you have to be aware of all the libraries okay and the no and the object model of sale point identity iq okay like you know from the identity object to the you no know, the access request object okay or maybe an identity request object so till that you, know, you need you need to have the knowledge of all the functional modules of the product okay so which will enhance to become an IAM engineer or a developer of sale point and also you need to have the complete visibility of the packages and libraries of sale point identity iq okay if you want to become a sale point developer okay so not only sale point uh, so there are a lot of IAM things uh, as i said uh, you have a savient you have sale point we have big players like you know ibm tivoli identity manager or you know ibm icm okay all of that okay and we have forge rock identity management okay there are a lot of iim solutions guys okay well next uh, we have the certifications and training guys okay so if you look at the iam uh, career opportunities if you are a certified engineer okay let us assume no, you are a certified engineer of let us assume you are a no cissp certified okay certified information system security professional then no, you are like a hot cake in the market you know in the iam space okay if you are you no know, certified identity and access manager CIAM then you are like a hot cake in the market okay and mainly if you are certified the leader of IAM which is sale point okay so if you got an enhanced certification then you, know, you can 
you can become a proper IM engineer and there are a lot of career opportunities for you with higher packages okay so looking at a certified engineers count currently so it's very least number of you know, certified engineers are available in the current trends if you are a certified engineer so there's a lot of potential for your growth and vital opportunities to enhance your knowledge of IAM okay so if you go to a, a, a smaller company as an IAM engineer okay so gaining a knowledge there and joining a bigger organization after getting certified so there will be a totally a different thing you know, when you look at it a broader picture you know, the things will be totally different okay the knowledge the amount of knowledge of manage you know, having uh, managing the users and all that knowledge it will definitely help you or add a value to your you know, the assignments okay so what are the projects you are going to join okay so be try to certify try to become a certified engineer and try to uh, be up to date guys okay so try to upgrade every time with what are the current knowledge you have try to upgrade with a, a newer informations and try to practice more which will give you more you know, insights into the IAM space okay and try to if you are new to the IAM so just join the trainings okay and try to follow the you know, things what have been taught to you in during the trainings okay those things will really help you, you know, in managing the organizations infrastructures as for the best practices okay well next uh, we have IEM career opportunities right so next we have the continuous learning okay so being up to date okay if you see you know, being up to date staying up updated you know with the latest trends and technologies IEM is very crucial okay as you meet lot of stakeholders as you meet lot of I am you know, team members you need to be having the knowledge of you know, what is the you know, current trends in the market okay. well engaging in continuous learning through online courses joining webinars attending webinars you know, attending industry conferences helping uh, definitely it will help you to stay professional it will help you to stay you know, relevant in the market okay so that is one of the things that one of the key things having continuous learning guys okay so if you are not a continuous learner just try to add you know, to your uh, schedule maybe you know, join some training join at least cssp training so just see what's happening over there how the things are being managed okay well okay so just try to aware of those terminologies guys okay which will help you a lot okay so try to be updated uh, yourself guys okay so this is one of the suggestions from my side yeah well due to the im specialization uh, due to the high demand so if you have this skill set then you no know, you can uh, definitely get a high paying job okay cool so yeah i am is a good space uh, for getting the good salaries i would say well so next uh, we have global opportunities so if if you are in i am field and if you own i am skill set then there are a lot of global opportunities for you okay as there is a high demand for i am professionals globally there are a lot of opportunities in various countries like you know you say you take america north america so in us there are a lot of projects europe asia so there are a lot of you know, projects around guys okay in singapore malaysia okay, so there are a lot of uh, projects and there are a lot of organizations delivering the you know im services so if you are part of uh, those organizations maybe you can move on site all of that as well cool so there's a you know, a lot of opportunities globally 
so high demand for sale point iq professionals well so growing adoption well so next uh, let's have a look into the identity you no know? sale point iq professionals demand okay so there is a high demand for iq sale point iq so if you take a sale point identity iq over 713 companies okay so growth it's like a growing adoption guys okay so more than 713 companies worldwide are using sale point identity iq as their im tool okay so this widespread adoption is you know, creating a high demand for the skilled professionals like you okay who can implement manage and optimize the sale point solutions you need to have in and out of sale point identity iq knowledge okay all the fundamental modules and the foundational modules knowledge you need to have and here are diverse roles in sale point identity iq if you specially look for sale point identity iq the specialization is the limited modules we have the compliance manager module life cycle manager modules password manager module if you have the ai module pam module okay ai module if you have the visibility at least visibility of these modules then you, know, you can become a certified identity iq engineer or a certified you know, identity iq developer okay so there are a lot of job roles uh, you know, within the sale point also we have guys okay so you can aim for sale point identity iq engineer okay and there's a as i said earlier like you know sale point developer so you can become a sale point developer you know if you have a java knowledge and if you join my uh you know the the develop the, the sale point identity iq development and engineering training so there i would be sh sharing a lot of insights you know, for you like uh, how to become an expert in, in in a sale point all of that so you you can even become in uh, so guys if you join sale point uh, training you no know, if you have i don't say you join my training but wherever whichever the organization you join okay if you have a proper knowledge okay of uh, all the modules functional modules so you can become an engineer developer sale point developer sale point architect business analyst consultant each uh, no each role uh, requires a specific expertise in sale point identity iq features and capabilities okay so if you have a good understanding of the libraries and packages of sale point then you are a good developer okay so if you have infrastructure really like you know uh, what are the compatible you know uh, supporting platforms of sale point identity iq all of that then you know there are a lot of architectural things involved around it like you know how the batch uh, you know, batch server or task server implementation happens you know if you are there in a, in a scratch level implementation project where you have installed the sale point in a lower environment or the production environment you know, it will give you a lot of scope uh, for that okay so that is your architecturally you know, having an idea on those things will really help you out okay so attractive salaries okay so sale point on an average uh, 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 salaries for sale point professionals is very high okay or competitive uh, you know, reflecting and the specialized skill sets are required uh, for example positions uh, of of a sale point i am uh, security engineer uh, no can get in us okay so the, the current us market can offer salaries of uh, ranging from 84000 no 84600 dollar to no 1 million 34000 dollars okay so no that much of uh, packages you can expect in the current state okay yeah so those are all the uh, you no know, salaries uh, you no know, expectation attractive salaries we have in sale point so remote work culture so as a high demanding skill so uh, there is a possibility of uh, getting remote for remote work opportunities uh, many companies 
are maybe working hybrid or maybe you know, companies are working offering remote positions you know providing the flexibility to work from home you know? yeah so it's a it's a good uh, you know technology to be part of yeah so technical skills uh, you know so if you are as i said earlier like you know if you have a knowledge uh, the proficiency on java xml or maybe any other programming language uh, you know, is required and experience with sale point identity iq special you know, specific functionalities how to develop those functionalities you know and the character development uh, how the character development happens uh, in sale point the custom character implementation the customizations of sale point okay so it will definitely add a lot of value to you know, become an uh, iam engineer okay a, a, a high uh, high salaried employee of uh, sale point professional can be helpful and certifications as i said earlier you no know, so we have iam uh, certifications right so for sale point also we have uh, various certifications so if you obtain the certifications like you know, sale point certified identity iq engineer sale point identity iq uh, architect or you no know, enhanced uh, you no know, prospects of uh, job will definitely uh, you can endorse those you no know, certificates to the customer and you can get uh, no high impression in the beginning itself uh, from the customer like you know and the confidence uh, what you can get you know, when you are when you are being part of uh, a project or maybe a team you know it will enthusiastically it will give you a lot of scope uh, for growth and you know, all of those prospects so if you are a certified engineer i would say yeah so if you see the sale point identity iq training path so candidates uh, who should have uh, typically taken a, a sale point identity iq fundamentals and uh, you know, provisioning training courses maybe on their official website or maybe with a uh, you know, proper organizations with one of the topest organizations like infosec you can become a certified engineer as well okay so the candidates okay so if you ask me uh, who can uh, get get the sale point certification okay if you look at the sale point certification path a candidate who has a knowledge of minimum the sale point identity to knowledge of 1 to 3 years okay in the implementation experience or you no know, uh, maybe a development experience okay so if you have one to three years of experience then you are eligible to gain this logo which is my identity iq associate okay how you need to write an exam on the official website of sale point which is called as a you know, sale point identity iq uh, compass okay so there's a sale point university dot sale point uh, you know, sale point dot com so you can log in there there you can register yourself. Uh, there is a certification which is called a Certified Identity IQ Associate. So if you get a uh, no, sale point Identity IQ Certified Associate, then you are eligible to become uh, a sale point Identity IQ Engineer. Okay, that is the highest level of certification as of today. Okay, which is called a sale point Identity IQ Engineer. Okay. So first, you need to become an associate. So basically, a certified associate is is a kind of knowledge based exam. So where they will be testing your knowledge of product, like you know uh, how how the task scheduling will happen, how the certification configurations will happen, how the audit uh, will happen, what are the compliance policies, how do how do the policies and reportings will happen in sale point. Okay, so those things, uh, you know will uh, as i said one to three years of experience guys okay so whatever the experience it could be maybe a, a engineer not engineer administrator support okay so those uh, knowledges will definitely give you to, you know, to become an identity iq associate okay it won't uh, no, stop you to become an identity iq certified associate okay well once once you become a identity iq uh, certified associate then you are eligible to become okay so you are like i i would say 50 percent 
eligible to become a certified identity IQ engineer okay so the thing what what should you know then okay so you should be knowing the identity IQ implementation such as rules okay what are the default rules of sale point like creation rule uh, no build map rule customization rule provisioning rule deprovisioning rule so if you know those rules so probably the default rules of sale point then you know, it will it will uh, add a lot of value to your uh, certification exam so it will give you a lot of knowledge to attend the certification exam so without a preparation also you can directly attend like you know scripts uh, having the knowledge on bean shell scripts uh, yeah powershell scripts basically api understanding the the you know, packages of sale point identity iq okay so having knowledge on custom reports workflows how does workflows uh, work in sale point what are the you know, process variables process designer the step-by-step -step procedure let me tell you what is workflow a workflow is nothing but a step-by-step -step, uh, you know, implementation of any business process is called as workflow okay like you know uh, to achieve some automation uh, we implement workflows to assign to assign accesses automatically to remove access automatically to launch the certification campaigns automatically to do the policy violation checks automatically so we use uh, workflows to launch the automatic rules tasks for those things well uh, you can also become a certified engineer guys okay so to become a certified engineer so what is the qualification so you need to become an i don't say associate is mandatory but it's always good to have an associate certification yeah and you can aim for engineer exam as well so which is my identity iq engineer so once you gain the identity iq engineer certified then as i said you will get a high you know, high paid salaries yeah so one more thing uh, uh, preparation for certification exam is first one so there would be totally seven modules guys okay there should be there are seven modules in the certification exam what are those modules first one the identity iq installation build and deployment how the installation of sale point will happen how the build will happen how the deployment will happen okay so that is one of the modules of uh, sale point guys okay so one of the modules okay identity iq installation uh, how the installation actual installation happens uh, you know, what are the supporting platforms having no, they will be testing your knowledge on 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 the installation part okay next we have identity iq life cycle manager module okay, which is a provisioning engine of sale point access request cell service registrations and everything you no know, it will be tested uh, they will also test your knowledge on workflows rules all of that okay next we have identity iq governance uh, module so this is one of the modules of uh, there uh, they will be testing your knowledge on certification policies risk scores okay reports custom reports they might test your knowledge on that guys okay so that's one of the modules in the certification so if you have a complete command on all these modules then you will be clear in the certification exam okay so next we have identity iq uh, development uh, having an understanding of rules uh, workflows that will also add a value to your uh, preparation in the certification exam application onboarding piece uh, having a complete understanding of application onboarding how it will work all of that so debugging of sale point identity iq troubleshooting is one of the sections they might test your knowledge on log 4 j2 properties how to modify them how to manipulate uh, the you know uh, the paths the logs loggers enabling the custom loggers and you know, blah blah all of those things okay so they will also test your knowledge on data and access modeling the data the the complete object model of sale point identity iq yeah so how to prepare uh, i have a recommendation for you uh, you need to have identity iq training probably both instructor or maybe a self-paced training okay and the complete command on the product documentation and technical white papers a lot of blogs vlogs you need to refer yourself yeah so probably this will uh, more than enough to become a certified engineer guys okay 
yeah so training sources if you ask me the sale point university okay so they do offer uh, comprehensive training parts including uh, instructor led trainings okay they do have some basic implementation advanced provisioning trainings so probably if you join those trainings also i think it's paid trainings guys okay yeah so, so sale point university is one of the valuable resources hands-on experience yes so if you uh, already have one year two year experience in sale point identity iq then uh, i think you are eligible to write the certification exam so that is engineer exam guys associate exam it's not mandatory i would say directly you can go for engineering exam okay so if you have a proper knowledge on all the modules and the libraries knowledge okay so that's an hands-on experience next we have continuous learning uh, if you have proper knowledge on continuous uh, no, on the basic trends in the market like you no know, zero trust as i told you guys earlier the scope of market and everything so if you have those uh, that is more than enough yeah and try to be part of uh, no, try to join lot of communities conferences i appreciate your time joining in this webinar as well definitely it will give you uh, as much as information i uh, no, i thought of giving guys okay well uh, next what else we have uh, career advancement tips so if you ask me start networking do network meet people join groups or linkedin or maybe whatsapp groups or telegram groups wherever it is just join iam professionals groups and it will give you a uh, valuable inf insights and opportunities to expand your knowledge yeah uh, professional development so as i said continuous improvement learning a uh, lot of documents so if you are uh, bored reading documents then uh, it's not healthy okay so you have to be <laughs> so when you become an iim engineer so you need to read lot of documents you need to have an habituation to read documents understand the documents okay so the, this is a professional development it does matter here yeah so stay updated stay relevant that will really help you in im field okay yeah so you'll, you will never become old yeah so that's that's something i have uh, this is one of the tip uh, doing a professional development in uh, doing continuous learning yeah all of that job search strategies okay if you ask me job search start strategies do prefer uh, naukri do prefer the the company if you are looking abroad look for whatever the company uh, you know opportunities uh, are available so you know, their company job portals it will help you okay well next we have trainer resuming okay so resume okay resume preparation also it does matter do a proper preparation and add a lot of value to your resume becoming certified engineer having proper knowledge and everything yeah that's all guys i have for today 